This recording is an introduction to the nervous system. This will predominantly just give a general overall view of the layout of the nervous system as well as some overall functions of the nervous system. Other recordings will go more in depth into the nervous system. So kind of to start with is the nervous system has two major divisions. You have the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, and these are centrally located. The peripheral nervous system includes our nerves, cranial nerves, which are associated with the brain, and spinal nerves, which are associated with the spinal cord, hence their names. Now, kind of it's a general overview is we'll give you just a, a, a general example of something that could happen. Is I, somebody says, close your eyes, and they put something in my hand and say, what is it? Well, I'm going to feel it, and I could, you know, I could smell it, I could feel it. I'm going to have detect, you know, different types of tactile information with my hand. I'll be smelling things with my nose. That information is going to be sent to my central nervous system. Well, I'll interpret that information. I'll figure out, okay, based on what I've, I know about certain things, I'm like, this is what this probably is. That central nervous system is processing it. Now, if someone put a snake in my hand, I can guarantee you very quickly, I will figure out it's a snake in my hand. And I will process there's a snake in my hand and I'll immediately throw it because I'm scared to death of snakes. So that central nervous system will respond to that and I'll have some sort of response. In my case, I'm going to probably scream and throw the snake. And so the peripheral nervous system is bringing that information, the sensory information to the brain. The, the central nervous system, and actually I should say, that information has to travel along the spinal cord, then up to the brain where I'm gonna process that. And then when I figure out, oh, snake, I don't wanna be holding it, I need to th use my muscles to throw that snake away from me. And so the peripheral nervous system will also be involved in that. So kind of, kind of, let's just kind of break down, you know, like kind of what I said, the general functions of the ner nervous system. So you have a sensory function. So sensory information is carried along what we refer to as the afferent. So you see the A. Afferent referring because the information is going towards the central nervous system. And the afferent information is carried along afferent neurons. And so I'm going to write, so these, will, I'm just going to represent, here's afferent neuron, and it's carrying information to the central nervous system. So the afferent neuron is also referred to as a sensory neuron because that's the type of information that's carried. So I can, I use those terms interchangeably. So if I say sensory neuron, I'm also referring to it as an afferent neuron. Now on this picture, you'll notice I have these different types of receptors. And there you have different types of receptors that detect certain types of stimuli. Well, then those that information is carried along these nerves. So if I someone holds in my hand, it's gonna be carrying along nerves in my arm up to the spinal cord. And we can refer to the, um, I hate to use the term now because we haven't talked about it, but those nerve fibers are actually axons of the neurons. And I can have a, um, a mix of different types of fibers in a nerve. And the one of them that I have could be we call somatic afferent fibers. So if I say somatic afferent fibers, they're sensory fibers. And the term somatic refers to that carrying impulses from your skin, skeletal muscles, joints. So those are considered somatic senses. If I say information is carried along visceral afferent fibers, again, afferent refers to its sensory, 
Visceral refers to its impulses coming from visceral organs, internal organs. Um, so is um, kind of come back here. So like inside your respiratory tract, your digestive tract, your urinary tract, those would be um, carrying information um, from those structures. So we can have those different types of fibers. Now once that information gets to the spinal cord and or brain, there'll be interpretation of that, those sensory impulses. Decisions will be made. And technically we can refer to, if you're talking about homeostatic balance and reflexes, the central nervous system would actually be considered the control center. The receptors would be detecting that information and they respond to certain variables. The information is carried along an afferent pathway, we've used those terms before, and then here the integrative function is taking place here within the central nervous system. It processes it, figures out what the appropriate response will be. There will be structures referred to as interneurons that will be part of that. So I'll just write the term interneurons and we're going to be looking at those in a later recording. Then what's going to happen is, okay, I know, we know what to do in response to this. I'm going to tell certain effectors, which you see out here, what to do. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to carry that information away. Think of exiting, E, away from that central nervous system via an efferent division. So the afferent division is sensory, the efferent division is motor. So if I go back to this picture here, I'm going to just draw an arrow going in this direction. So here would be the effectors. Up here would have been receptors. So the efferent fibers are found within efferent neurons. And if I use the term efferent neuron, they're also referred to as motor neurons. These are going to tell various effectors what to do. And we have um, two components of the um, motor division of the, the nervous system. And you'll notice I have here somatic nervous system and I have autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system has fibers that control skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle is voluntary muscle. This is going to allow us to maybe consciously control skeletal muscle. The autonomic nervous system regulates smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. So think of smooth muscle and cardiac muscle as being involuntary muscle. Now the Autonomic nervous system has two divisions, parasympathetic, people talk about it as being part of the rest and digest division, and sympathetic like fight or flight. And we will be discussing both the somatic nervous system as well as the autonomic nervous system in subsequent lectures, and we'll also be looking at the sensory um, pathways involved in carrying certain types of sensory information to the central nervous system for processing. So this is just an introduction to the nervous system. Next recording, we're going to look at nervous tissue and specifically look at the structure of neurons.